Today's question comes from a viewer and it says, show that for all real values of alpha and beta, the value of the function x squared minus alpha beta divided by 2x minus alpha minus beta cannot lie between alpha and beta. Hmm. Um, okay, so I think this is this is going to have something to do with the sign of Is that, well, is that, uh, I, I mean, I, like I noticed at the top that uh, in the numerator, um, you know, in the numerator, I have a product of alpha and beta subtracted from x squared and in the denominator I have the sum of alpha and beta subtracted by subtracted from 2x like no I'm not I'm, I'm actually not completely clear uh, how I might approach this uh, so I might have to just fool around with um, Might have to fool around with some things. Mm. Like maybe, I'm gonna assume without loss of generality that alpha is greater than beta. Uh, you know, if it's not, we can just interchange the two of them. Doesn't really make a difference. Uh, what if I, you know, can, is it possible this, uh, this function is equal to alpha, um, or beta? Okay, we're going to call this f of x, and to get started, I'm curious what f of alpha and f of beta are. So f of alpha is alpha. Uh, this should show that f of beta is also going to be equal to beta. Um, okay, so suppose, I'm going to try something. It's probably not the intended way to solve this question, but um, in theory it should work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a number between alpha and beta. We'll call it gamma. And I'm going to set this function equal to gamma and then solve for x. And uh, we should see that x does not have real values. Okay, so gamma is between alpha and beta. We're going to suppose that f of x is equal to gamma. So any value of x such that f of x equals gamma has to satisfy this. And now I'm going to solve for x. This is a quadratic polynomial.
We really only care about the thing under the square root sign because I'm hoping that it will turn out to be negative. But I'm just going to expand it and see what happens. the best way to do this. Okay, and uh, this is negative. Um, so I've said that uh, Gamma is in between alpha and beta. Uh, I guess, in fact, I have I have this backwards because I've said that alpha is greater than beta. So alpha is greater than beta. Uh, gamma is in the interval from beta to alpha. And then when I solve for x, I see that, well, alpha is greater than beta and gamma is in between so this is actually negative alpha is greater than gamma uh, so that's negative so i have no real value of x that gives me f of x is equal to gamma um yeah, again, I don't know if this is exactly how um, the viewer intended for me to solve this question. There might be another, maybe there's another analytical way or something like that of seeing that um, this function can never lie between alpha and beta. But uh, I think this is a perfectly fine approach uh, at the end of the day. But yeah, I'm curious to hear if other people have different ways of approaching this problem. Thanks for watching.